With the DNA vaccine, what we're going to do is instead of injecting you with a protein that's representative of the disease, like a protein from the flu virus or a Zika protein or something like that, we're actually going to inject you with the gene that codes for that protein. And we're going to, we're going to let your own cells in your body make that protein. And then that protein will be released into your blood. It will be detected by your immune system. And you will, in fact, then create an immune response to it and create those memory TMB cells. But the advantage, the advantage of the DNA vaccine is, one, we're going to continue to be exposed to this protein until you actually mount an immune response. The problem with a traditional protein-based vaccine is that sometimes the protein is degraded, it's consumed, it's eliminated before you get a chance to mount a fully robust immune response to it. Secondly, uh, you get a, a T cell response, especially a cytotoxic T cell response, and T cell responses are really the key to a long-lasting vaccine. If you're like me, you remember earlier in your youth, for example, when you got a tetanus vaccine, you'd have to get a shot every two to three years. Now the vaccine is every 10 years because we've learned how to better manipulate your immune system to create a longer lasting immune memory of that particular antigen that's, that causes the disease. The real advantage though to DNA vaccines is the low cost of manufacturing them and the ease of manufacturing the vaccine. We can make a, a DNA vaccine in a bacteria like E. coli, and E. coli are much cheaper to produce uh, than Cho cells or N0 cells. We can produce them in very large quantities. And the other thing is, is that's the upstream part, manufacturing the vaccine, growing the cells. The downstream part, purifying the vaccine component, which in this case would be the DNA, which is a gene that's been inserted into a plasmid, purifying DNA is much easier and much cheaper than purifying a protein. So we can save a lot of money and we can make this vaccine very quickly. And then, of course, uh, DNA is very stable. Think of Jurassic Park, right? We can store DNA for years, decades, even centuries, and it won't degrade unlike proteins. Uh, so once we have storage and, and cheap conditions to store this in, that cuts down on the transportation costs and we can stockpile this vaccine for when we need it. Uh, it is, however, still in development because as great as I made all the sound, the one challenge with the DNA vaccine is actually getting the DNA to be stable enough to survive in your cells long enough to actually create the, the desired immune response. So we're injecting this piece of DNA usually into your muscle cells, and then the muscle cells will begin to produce the protein, and that protein will then trigger the immune response. But the limiting factor here is that the DNA itself doesn't stay stable long enough in your muscle cells to produce enough protein to mount an immune response. Once that problem is solved, though, DNA vaccines will probably be the predominant vaccine, uh, pr predominant vaccine method in the industry for the future. So if you want to learn more about vaccines and how the immune system works, visit us at biotechprimer.com or stop by and take an in-person class from one of our instructors. Thank you.